Cantonian Tauros was one of the strongest Pokemon in Gen 1 competitive, and it's still a threat after all these years. At base 100 attack and 110 speed, this old bull's got some fight left in him. Where it's truly able to shine is through its ability, Sheer Force. This gives a 30% boost to any attack that has a secondary effect, at the cost of nullifying that effect. For example, Body Slam gets the boost, but can no longer paralyze the opponent. So this actually stacks with the Life Orb held item. We're able to get the additional 30% increase in damage, and the best part is that when using a move with a secondary effect, the Life Orb doesn't hurt us like it normally does. Moves like Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, and Iron Head to name a few, catch people off guard with the huge damage it's able to dish out, and Tauros is really fun. Alright look, sometimes you just gotta get back to the classics. I've been using regular Tauros in Wi-Fi battles since Wi-Fi battles became a thing, and he's always just a super fun Pokemon to use. If you enjoy the content, consider hitting that subscribe button because I bet you haven't clicked it yet. And let's go ahead and get into the battle. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Hydrapple. That's kind of bad news for me because I decided to lead off with a pile of rocks. Now, Hydrapple is a little bit of a threat to my team, mostly just because I don't have any ice coverage and I would really like to get some type of damage off on this thing. Now, I also know that I should be able to at least take an attack from this thing. Obviously, I have my sturdy ability intact, but more importantly, I'm actually faster than the Hydrapple. Plus, if this thing is modest max special attack, a Giga Drain does like 75% to me, which is fine. So I take this opportunity to lay down some Stealth Rock. It turns out they are going to go for the Energy Ball, which I am able to take. Kind of shows me this thing is probably going to be invested more in defenses. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what might actually be nice here? What the So I go full Kamikaze on his ass for not the most impressive amount of damage, but that's what we're all about, baby. Exploding on stuff just because we can. So they're going to energy ball the air, of course. And at this point, this is going to allow me to switch into whatever I like. So I decided to go into Passimian just because I've got this thing down to a range where it looks like U-turn kills. And also that covers for a switch if they want to try to get a better matchup. So I go for the U-turn here that is going to take care of the Devil Apple. And down goes a pretty big threat to my team. So... Now I've got myself a decision to make, and that is what to bring in on the empty battlefield. In these positions, generally, I try to just go into something fast, and if they have a pivot, that's even better. So, I have just the thing, which comes in the form of some wooden balls, I bring in the Hisuian Electrode. So, seeing this, they decide to bring in the Rhydon, and it's important to note, Hisuian Electrode actually has a great matchup against pretty much everything on their squad here, barring one thing, which is going to be the Yogurt Pond. So, I just make the obvious play here, I'm going to go for that Leaf Storm, it does take care of the Rhydon, I don't care how many Eviolites you got. Uh, that takes care of that thing easily. Now, they get a free switch, and now they decide to bring in the Ogre Pond, which is actually pretty decent timing because, of course, with, you know, the minus two special attack, I'm not going to be able to touch this thing with the Hisuian Electrode, and Ogre Pond puts a solid amount of pressure on my team here to where I have to kind of make a rough decision. That is to sack the Mimikyu. We got sack going all over the place. Pause. And I, I really feel like I just, Mimikyu doesn't have a great matchup here, and at least coming in and dying is going to allow me something against this Ogre Pond. So, they go for the Ivy Cudgel there. If you're wondering why Disguise doesn't work, is because this thing is Mold Breaker, and it is quite damn annoying. And this now at least opens up the door to bring in the Tauros. The Absolute Goat is looking really solid for this matchup for a couple reasons, and you're going to see why. So... First of all, we have a speed tie with a max speed Ogre Pond. I decide I am not afraid of a girl in a mask. I am able to outspeed and knock that thing out with the Rock Slide. So we don't take any Life Orb chip and we get extra damage from the Sheer Force, which allows that to kill, which is amazing. And the Ogre Pond being gone really opens the door for me here. So now they're switching is going to be Mew. We got a couple of Gen 1 homies here. I decided to just go for the Body Slam, which does a huge amount of damage. Uh, mainly the reason why I stay in here is just because of the fact that I know even from a modest max special attack Mew, his best damage would be Psychic there. I know that I can take one of them and that allows me to basically just sit on this thing once more, body slam his ass, and that does take care of the Mew. So Tauros going on a little bit of a mini rampage here and we have enough speed uh, to handle one of the other threats which comes in the form of the Crocodile. So this thing comes in, uh, we don't see Intimidate which means it's Moxie and if this thing is Choice Scarf it's going to be able to outspeed. However, I decide to just go for the Terra Fairy and I'm going to see if this thing is Scarfed, I'm able to essentially outspeed and the Terra Fairy is going to allow me a nice little super effective hit with that Terra Blast. So I make myself freaking adorable, I put the heart on my head here 
And at this point, Tauros is looking even more menacing than ever. So I do actually outspeed, and the, ter the Terra Blast should be enough to take out the Crocodile from full after the like minuscule stealth rock chip. So that takes care of it. And uh, listen, Tauros is out here making a case for why this thing didn't even need a new damn form. Buddy is good enough the way he is, I swear to God. So. Their final Pokemon is going to be the Lapras here, and after the Stealth Rock, it looks like the super effective Rock Slide hit with the Sheer Force and Life Orb should be enough to take care of this thing because Offensive Tauros is an absolute beast. That does take care of the Lapras, and down goes the final Pokemon. Tauros is out here just destroying. Like I'm in a damn China... What is it? What's the fucking saying? Yeah, bowl in a China shop? Like I'm a bull in a china shop out here and the china shop is in fact a battlefield. So that's going to finish that one off. However, we do have one more game and this one is an extremely good match. If you think you were satisfied with the first one, keep keep your finger off the back button because this is a, a super fun game against a very scary team and let's go ahead and get into it. So this time my opponent decides to lead off with the Meowskarada as I'm just going to toss out the fast pivot and try to put some pressure early with the Hisuian Electrode. So. At this point, this thing kind of threatens my team here. Obviously, I can't really touch it with the Electrode. Trying to think about what I want to go in here, I do have to just go for that Volt Switch to honestly get some pretty respectable chip and now figure out who comes in on a Meowskarada. I also realize with just max HP investments, um, I should be able to take like two Flower Tricks with, uh, with Regirock. The good news is they're not going to go for the Flower Trick against the Electrode. I expect potentially a U-turn here, but it turns out they're actually going to go for the Triple Axle, and that is just barely going to scratch our boy Dwayne the Rock Johnson over here. Uh, it hardly even hurts. But uh, my main goal was to try to take a Flower Trick at this point, get myself into Custat Berry range, and then go boom. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the Stealth Rock here as they're just going to go for the U-turn and save the Meowska router for later. It's also important to note we don't see any choice item on that thing, so uh, that is at least good intel. As they decide to go into the Dawn Fan, and this thing is here, I'm feeling like because they know I'm going to Stealth Rock, but also they can obviously just rapid spin that away. And the Regirock is kind of in a position here where I can't really do anything to this, and I'm just going to get my ass out of here and expect them to probably go for the rapid spin. That's what I would do if I'm in this position. So I decide to bring in the ghost type in the form of Mimikyu and fake ass Pika is going to be like, hey, how's it uh, how's it going out here? Just nice to meet you. And then boom, just get him immediately with a knockoff, which is pretty damn rude because you snap my neck within three seconds of meeting me. And uh, Mimikyu is actually in a pretty bad spot uh, immediately not having my disguise. So I come in here on the knockoff However, uh, at this point I know that I can basically try to get as much value out of this by getting some chip on the Don Fan. The only thing that I have that applies a lot of pressure on this is going to be the Hisuian Electrode. I do also have damage with Veluza, except if this thing is at full HP, it's not going to be enough unless I have a fillet away. So I decide to just go for the Shadow Claw here to try to roll for a crit, but also just guarantee that I can get some chip up on this thing. And that does allow him to finish off the Mimikyu. So at least the good news is now I can bring in whatever I want. And I'm kind of thinking like, you know what? It would be a good time for a little fish fillet action going. So I'm gonna go into Veluza. Uh, and looking at some damage, I feel like at this point without even a boost in Aqua Cutter should be enough to kill here as I can't really risk going for the fillet away. Obviously we know this thing has the knockoff here. So I just decide to go for that Aqua Cutter and that is gonna take care of Donphan. So that's a pretty big defensive switch in out of the way. Uh, and now they can bring in whatever they like against the fish. And this is another defensive asshole washing machine that honestly is annoying to play. I, I hate Rotom Wash. For some reason, man, this thing sucks. But I decided to go for the substitute. Now, the reason is I predict them to try to get a Will-O-Wisp here. Now, that would really cripple, obviously, everything that Veluza does, and the substitute would block it. However, they just decide to make the safe play and go for the Volt Switch there, either expecting a switch um, or something like the substitute. It does break the sub, so I'm like, oh, hey, that was a... Uh, I worked hard on setting that beanbag up, but uh, this is now going to allow them to bring in whatever they like, and they decide to go with the Meowskarada. So this thing is very scary for me because, of course, it does outspeed before I have my fillet away set up, and I figure, you know what, I'm going to bring in Regirock here because surely a flower trick is coming. It's going to do around 50% to me, bring me to Custat Berry range. I can then use that to outspeed and then go boom. That is the plan. However, they just, <laughs> they just decide to go for the U-turn. They've got pivoting all over the damn place, and it's actually allowing them some great momentum here. 
I have a Volt Switch and U-Turn Core of my own, which does make this match very interesting, but uh, the pivot now allows the washing machine to come back in, and uh, we also do see, of course, earlier we saw the leftovers on this thing, so it's good to note that this thing is not probably not going to go for like a Choice Scarf trick or something, and rather have to go for a Hydro Pump if it wants to knock me out, and I am feeling like, you know what, I'm just going to gamble it. If you want to try to hit the Hydro Pump, that is fine. Uh, however, they actually just go for the Volt Switch, which is great for me because that doesn't quite kill. And now, something has to switch in on a Regirock that is going to be doing something completely random that they have no idea, as they actually decide to go into the worst possible case thing for me, clicking Explosion, which is going to be the Tinkaton. So, Big Ass Hammer comes in. I can at least get the Explosion off here, which I, I wasn't expecting to necessarily be able to get off, because every Rotom Wash always hits the damn Hydro Pumps, but... Uh, the Volt Switch does allow me to get some uh, some pretty considerable chip on the Tinkaton. Now, the important thing is I'm looking at this matchup in the way of like trying to figure out a position to where Tauros uh, can finish it off here. And I actually have, at least in my mind, a pretty solid opportunity for that just because of the Terra Fairy looks great if I can bait the Dragapult in and hit a Dragon move. So, at least at this point, what the Explosion does is it puts the Tinkaton uh, in range easily for Earthquake to kill. So, I just decide to make... The obvious play, don't want to over predict. I go for that Earthquake as they are going to make the Grape switch here into the Rotom Wash. Obviously, this little levitating asshole is going to be floating above the Earthquake. And uh, while it does take some Stealth Rock damage here, seeing as it's leftovers, it's definitely going to be more of a defensive set. And sadly, a Body Slam at this range isn't quite going to be able to knock it out. So I need a few things to happen in this match for Tauros to pop off, but one of them is going to be definitely trying to get some chip on the Rotom Wash here. So, I decide this thing probably clicks something like a Will-O-Wisp, um, or a Hydro Pump, or a Volt Switch. I just decide, assuming Electrode actually switches into anything this thing wants to do, and just does put some pressure on pretty much everything here. As they do decide to click the Will-O-Wisp, just out here burning my balls, but that is perfect if there's anything that wants to be burnt. Uh, Hisuian Electrode is kind of the only thing I can really bring in to take that. So, at this point, there's a couple different options. Either I predict them to stay in for whatever reason and go for a grass move, or they switch out. Now, the likely option is they definitely switch here, but uh, they actually end up going for the Protect, which uh, is going to scout out what I'm going to lock myself into. They likely know that I'm Choice Specs uh, at this point, because that's kind of what Electrodes do. Uh, but the Volt Switch there kind of loses my element of surprise. It also gives them another turn. Uh, to eat uh, some leftovers. I don't know what kind of washing machine needs to consume apples, but uh, it's pissing me off. And this thing has way too much health at this point. Uh, and Electro looks like it's kind of one of my best counters. I decide I'm just going to stay in and go for that Volt Switch again. Uh, they Again, they don't have really anything they can do to me, so they are going to end up switching. And now we get to see the Iron Moth. So, good news about Iron Moth is it takes some solid chip from the Stealth Rock, but also the Volt Switch does a huge chunk of damage. Uh, and also gives me a nice little switch here. So, something interesting to note here is that both Tauros and the Iron Moth have a speed tie at base 110. So, this puts me in a spot where I can go into the Tauros here, and I know that I can live any single attack from the Iron Moth and end up knocking it out with an Earthquake. However, knowing how they, their playstyle has been so far, they definitely want to switch in the Rotom Wash on an Earthquake here, uh, which is the smart play. So, I'm going to go ahead and predict that, and instead, go for the Rock Slide. It covers for the switch, but also if they stay in, Rock Slide kills anyway. Uh, but they do bring in the Rotom, and the Rock Slide's not going to do a whole lot of damage. But the reason why I go for that move is Rock Slide actually puts this thing in range, or at least it should, to where now a Body Slam with the Sheer Force, with the Life Orb, should be able to knock it out. So I can go for it with the Tauros, sit on him, and that is going to break down the Rotom. So that is absolutely amazing. The combo of Rock Slide and Body Slam comes in clutch. And now they bring in the biggest threat on their side of the field, which is going to be the Dragapult and the reason why I have been conserving my Terra. And that is because even though they easily outspeed me here, their only play is to click Dragon Darts or some form of Dragon Stab because of course they can't go for a Ghost Move against the Tauros. So I go ahead, commit the Terra Fairy, which I'm really hoping this pays off because I've seen this opportunity for the entire match for Tauros to do this. And they do end up going for the Dragon Darts, which is amazing. Obviously, no longer is going to be able to affect me here. And not only that, but then I can fire off the Terra Blast, which should be enough to take care of the Dragapult, and it does. So, Terra Fairy Tauros doing exactly what it's built to do, taking care of huge threats like the Dragapult. 
And now we're in a position to honestly win the game with the Tauros. I have coverage against pretty much everything that they have left as they decide to go into the Tinkaton here who is chipped to the point where an Earthquake is going to kill. And it should be smooth sailing for, you know, the greatest bull of all time out here. They have the Meowskarata and the Iron Moth left. However, they decide they're just actually going to go ahead and run because, listen, the Tauros is scary. And, you know, I get that. Sometimes you, you got you to just got to get the hell out of there. So that's going to be the end of the game there. Uh, we're going to chalk that one up as an absolute amazing Tauros clutch. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy the video. If you stuck around till the end, go ahead and comment bull for me because that's the goat right there. See you.